All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is July 6th, 2021, and I know we are all on the edge of our seat. <laughs> it's a time of anxiousness. It's a time of excitement. It's a time of reflection and sorrow and for the prayers and for the family and friends that we're trying to reach. But that's why we keep doing what we do. We love the Lord. We diligently seek Him. And we do this and we share this and we we share with people not only this, but the salvation of Christ as well. Because the time is near and we do it for love. That is why I do what I do. And I'm so excited to share this with you today. I know a lot of people have had questions. Uh, there's been so much uh, in the last... Uh, Oh, just in the last few videos, you know, just in this row of videos here that has been revealed with greater understanding than we've had before. And obviously it causes a bunch of questions because, you know, we add them into the mix of the greater picture that we have. And of course, it's always going to lead to to more questions. Say, well, OK, well, that there. Well, how was this here? How that? <laughs> All right. So we get a lot of questions with that. And. Of course, there's always new people. So when new people come in, we can't spend too much time on on what got us to this point. However, we can always direct you by going to this favorite playlist of ours, which is the revelation. The two keys that revealed everything in this ministry that's been revealed began with the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to, finally revealed. A mystery for hundreds of years that the church has been looking to understand. It's revealed here. This video right here, this first 30-minute intro video, is the beginning of the understanding for you guys. It's an introduction to it. You're going to see that Matthew, Mark, Luke in the end times is Luke, Mark, Matthew. The synoptic gospels were written to three groups of people. Matthew to the Jews. Mark to the sleeping church with Israel, right? Grafted in and Luke to the bride of Christ. And in the end, it's Luke, Mark, Matthew. What you're going to find out that does is it also reveals that the end of days is not one set of seven years, but two sets of seven years. And the first thing people say is, oh my goodness, seven years was long enough. Don't tell me it's 14. Well, first of all, you shouldn't worry about however long it is, because if you're watching, seeking, praying, diligently seeking the Lord, loving him, repentant, don't worry about it. Keep doing it. Keep doing. Keep seeking the Lord. Keep loving the Lord. Be repentant, right? And it won't matter how long. If it was 100 years, it wouldn't matter. All right? But what you come to find out is, when you come to understand that it's Luke, Mark, Matthew, you realize that, oh my goodness, because we've been taught in the church all our lives that it's seven years, the reason they see it's seven years, you're going to understand in the third video that the reason we came to understand it's only seven years is because the entire time of end times, since they realized there was this harpazo taking place, They've only understood seven years because the entire foundation of gospel teaching comes from the book of Matthew. And that's the same with the end of days. The reason is they thought that the gospels were just another point of view to help bring more clarity. And as much as that partly is the case, it was much deeper. It's the reason why the gospels have stories that are similar yet very different in what they tell us. That's been revealed here in this ministry. And when you when you see these things here and you realize that, oh my goodness, because our foundation has been in Matthew for hundreds of years, we only see going as the rapture and then the seven years of Jacob's trouble. What's been missed because Mark wasn't understood is that really Mark portion of seven years still has to take place as well. That'll be the final church portion 
for that sleeping church, that that easy Christianity they, that we would call them. The sleeping church that think I could just confess Jesus with my mouth and I'm going to heaven. All right. Yes, that's part of it. But if you don't have a change in your life, if the spirit hasn't moved within you to change your ways, I'm sorry to say, but that's not being saved. Your life will change. You will not want to do these things, those sinful things before. You will you will pause and question. It doesn't mean you're perfect and you won't sin. But when you do, you'll be repentant. You, you'll ask for forgiveness and to be strengthened to turn from that and not do it again. All right. So what ends up happening is you realize why Mark has a discourse. And the reason Mark has a discourse and it sounds different, similar, but different than Matthew's is because Mark's has his own. Mark's is the seven years of seals. Matthew's is seven years of trumpets. And Luke is the escape of the bride of Christ and a portion of time that is going to be 50 days. Okay, the bride isn't here. The Gentile bride isn't staying for the 50 days, but there's a group of workers in a period of time, 50 days before the 14, the two sets of seven begin. And I did a little write up here for you guys to see. Very, very simple one pager. And we're going to go through this today so that you guys can see from the last video and understand where the timing of these events are. You can, you'll, you're going to understand why Jesus said of that day and hour in Matthew, right? That, but of that day and hour knows no man. Well, we all know that that means the Feast of Trumpets, but it has nothing to do with the rapture. We shared that in the last video. Mark also says, but of that day and hour knows no man. It also means the Feast of Trumpets, yet it's not the same as Matthew's. Okay, just like their discourses aren't exactly the same. And when you get to Luke's, Luke doesn't say it. Why? Because the Feast of Trumpets, the day and hour no one knows that Jesus is talking about in Mark and in Matthew, they're related to the times when he's coming. Okay, that sounds crazy. What do you mean? Jesus is coming once, twice. How many times is Jesus coming? Well, <laughs> you're going to see. It doesn't mean he's going to be seen by everybody during the time uh, of the rapture. He's going to be in the clouds. All right? It's not till the end of Matthew when he comes at the Feast of Trumpets that he is going to be seen on the clouds by the entire world. All right? So I'll bring, we're going to bring more clarity to this timing. We're going to do it by going into the scriptures and we're just going to go point by point. There wasn't a whole bunch of points there. We'll go point by point and we'll show where these things are in the scripture. And I'll bring clarity. We'll talk about the two swords. That was a question that I had. You know, what about the two swords of Jesus? Can you can you show how those are applied, where they are? Is there a little bit more in scripture uh, that tells us about these things? So we'll talk about that as well. And time permitting, we'll even touch a little bit into the bulls. Not that we need to go into every bull, just like we don't go into every trumpet or every seal, in particular the trumpets. You know, as you guys know, when you see it, the first three and a half years of trumpets, the Lord is on Mount Zion in the clouds, whatever that's going to look like. And they're going to be rebuilding the city and the streets and the temple and everything. But we don't talk about generally those four trumpets that are also blasting off during the time of those first three and a half years of trumpets. All right. Those first three and a half years of the trumpet judgments, there's some serious damage taking place on the earth with a third of the trees burning up, a third of the waters turning to blood, a third of the rivers turning to blood. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's terrible, all right? There's a whole bunch going on while there's this celebration and rejoicing going on in Israel, all right, in Jerusalem. So we'll, we'll cover some of those and we'll talk about those things. But you see, guys, anybody who's new, I'm telling you, these two intro videos, 30 minutes long. You can get the printouts in the description box. Just click show more. I promise you it'll be worth your time if you're seeking understanding of the end of days. 
because what you're all about to find out, uh, new people, is that in a 14-year time frame, it is six years of seals, the seventh year Sabbath. Six years of trumpets, the seventh year Sabbath. Okay, The Lord comes after six in both cases, but in different ways. And at trumpets, when he comes at the end of the six, that's after 13 years. So in 13 years, well, when would that be? That'll be the fall of 2034. 2,000 years after he was here, right? After 2,000 years, he was told we were told he would return. You see, in a seven-year thinking, well, you shouldn't worry about anything till give or take around the year 2027, right? So why is everybody talking about this is the time of the rapture? Oh, the rapture's coming, rapture's coming. But in a seven-year tribulation, well, that's 2028, but the seventh year is always a Sabbath, so it's got to be 2027. You see, that's part of the stuff that, that gets missed a lot in the understanding. We're going to cover a bunch of that today because in the last video, we shared the revelation of the day and hour no one knows and why it's in Mark and why it's in Matthew. And neither of them has to do with the rapture. All right. But just it's so precise. You guys are going to love it. <clears throat> so after you've watched these first two and watch this third one and you'll understand what has happened, how this was missed, this other seven years that happens first. OK, it's the final seven years for the church because that portion that's sleeping has to wake up. And the only thing that will wake them up is devastation. I always think of it like 9-11. Right, a lot of people like to talk about that. When 9/11 happened, the churches were were full for about six weeks. Okay, that's what devastation. That's what war does. That's what attacks do. They bring people to church. So if nothing happens, is it's all smooth sailing, the churches are going to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. People in their faith are going to dwindle and dwindle, and the Lord will have nobody left to save. All right, this is why it's an act of love of what the Lord is doing. Okay, and then make your way through these videos. You ever want to understand the seven churches in the book of Revelation for the end of days? Come and watch this video, The End Time Seven Churches Revealed. It's going to blow your mind. Okay, so incredible, incredible revelations here. And when you finally see the picture of the 14 years, it will all come into clarity. You, it will make so much sense. Your eyes will open and you'll, you'll just be blown away. Um, here's another thing you can do. So this is the Ministry Revealed website. If you wanted to download the study notes, if you wanted to download the videos, all our videos are here. You can go into the menu and go to videos. All the videos are there. And guess what? Our brother Jimmy, who does our website for us, one-click download. So anything you wanted to save, one-click download. The whole thing's free. Nothing's charged in this ministry for anything. All right? You can even use a free Bible memory app. We have a brother that bought it for us, got a deal, and bought us a whole bunch of them. And I'm not sure how many are left, but I know that there's some left. You can click on this button. You can enter Ministry Revealed like you see it here on the first line that will show up. On the second line that will show up, you enter your own email address. And then you click the Activate button underneath it after you've clicked on here. And you can get a free Bible memory app to learn how to remember and use your use uh, um, uh, uh, the scriptures and to bring them up when you want them and where you want them. All right. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Here's our sister Petra's website. Ah, I got it right that time. Hello, Petra. So she has a lot of, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, devotionals. All right. A lot of devotionals, word from the Lord. We have uh, Trisha who has fireside chats. You can go to her website here as well. All right. So lots of exciting stuff. And before we get going in this portion of, of breaking this down and showing you guys literally the years, literally the years based on scripture and to realize the Lord actually told them when he was coming. But of course, in the day and hour, no one knows. He didn't say in the week or in the month or in the year. You see, we've got scripture that says that, by the way, before, you know what, let me go show you that. It's something that, that puzzles people. Let me show you 
Uh, Revelation, is it chapter 9? Revelation chapter 9, listen to what it says. Let me just show you an example. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of the men. <clears throat> of men. Now, let me ask you. If Matthew and Mark's discourse the Lord didn't want the Lord was trying to tell us that we wouldn't know the month and we wouldn't know the year. Don't you think he could have told us just like he did here? Of course. We have scripture proving that if he wanted to be that specific, he could have. So why was he telling us the day and hour no one knew? Because it's the feast of trumpets. Okay, we spoke about that in the last video. Literally, the, the day and hour no one knows is the Feast of Trumpets. All right. Now, I wanted to bring this <clears throat> to your attention as well. You can have coffee any time of night. Well, I can. <laughs> so this is something we haven't spoken about in a little bit. This is that stone's cast. We've talked about it many times in the past. But it's something we should really bring people up. Uh, uh, we should really bring up as a reminder again. Let me show you what we're talking about here. It's really good because it's tied in with the two swords. It follows it. So it's pretty cool. Okay. When we've shared this in the past. So for new people, what happens is when Christ is about to be taken into the hands of sinful men. Okay. So what happens is they had the Passover meal on the evening of the 14th. So let, let's use the calendar just to help us out for this season and time. Now, here's the thing. Everybody will probably say, but that's Passover. That was way back in March. I agree. That was all the way back in March. However, the Lord revealed to us here in this ministry and was waking us up to it for over a year. It was like 15 months revealing to us that everything was connected to the ox, to the bull, to Taurus. All right? We finally understood that this year, and he led us to this time frame right here. And here's the thing. We would say, okay, well, if this is the Passover time frame, and this is what we're talking about, well, then we should be talking about right here, this stone's throw that the Lord's talking about. And you would be right to think that because this is where the Lord led us to begin our count this year so that from the morrow after, you number seven Sabbaths. And when we do that, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the day of the escape of the Gentile bride. Okay, to the 50 days that will follow. Now, here's why this is important and why I'm sharing that. Because we finally understood the code is cracked. Others have understood it, but I say it's cracked here because now it's beyond just knowing that the Feast of Weeks was a portion of seven times seven Sabbaths. Then shall you number 50 days. Okay? When the seven times seven Sabbaths are done, this is the Feast of Weeks, okay? This is that portion of the Feast of Weeks where, where the Jews dress in white and, and there's this celebration and rejoicing going on, okay? And then it says, and from the morrow after, which is when the first attack will happen on Israel, this is the morrow after, the ninth of Av, a very particular date that we knew after the true 70 years of Israel came to an end that this date, would never be observed as fasting or mourning again, which means by this date, they must be attacked this year. And so we've got videos that talk about this as well. Well, from there, following Leviticus, you number 50 days. And when you number 50 days, you get to the end of the year. You get to the year's end the Holy Ghost comes, 
the second attack happens on Israel, this time in Jerusalem, and they will be scattered for the next seven years. So why is it important? And what am I getting at when I'm saying the seven times seven and then the 50? Because the seven times seven takes us here. And this is what the Jews would observe. Now they can't, there's no temple, so they don't bring in the first fruits of the wheat harvest to the Lord, but that's what they would normally do at this time, right? From the 17th into the 18th. And so from there, what do the Christians do? Well, the Christians have been counting the same way as the Jews, but really what the Christians are observing is Pentecost, not the seven times seven. And so you realize that then you number 50 days. And when you number 50 days, that's what takes you to true Pentecost. All right. That is Pentecost. And so how did this play out in the time of Christ? Huge, huge revelation we received in that study. And how is it then that if it was seven times seven and then numbering 50? Well, we had a massive revelation that's tied in directly to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay, If he's speaking to three groups of people, which is what I talked about in that intro video, when you understand who the Gospels are speaking to, when you understand why they speak differently, because they're speaking to different groups of people, you say, well, wait a second. Then if the Feast of Weeks is actually seven times seven weeks and then counting 50 days, we say, well, how did that apply at the time of his resurrection? Because we've all been taught that at his resurrection, he met with the apostles. It was 40 days and then it was 10 days later to Pentecost. That's what we've all been taught because they combine all the gospels together in particular, the synoptic ones of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And they take them all together and they say, see, it's all the 50 days. But really, it's three separate groups of people. And when we did that, it was a mind blower. Because that would mean that the seven and the seven had to be a portion of time with Matthew and Mark. And the 50 had to be a portion of time with Luke's group. And that's exactly what we had, right? Luke is the only group at the resurrection story of Christ. Luke's group is the only one that is told to wait. Where is it? They're the only one that's told to wait for the father. Where is it? Uh, da, 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 so. 24. Yeah, I'm in Luke 24. It's the only one where they're told to wait. No, right here. Verse 49. See, I got it even highlighted in bright orange and I still missed it. <laughs> so, and it said, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. It's the only one where they're told to wait for the 50 days that will follow after this after his third day resurrection. It's the only one. When you go to the story of Mark in, in the, at the resurrection story, there's no waiting. They're sent out. When you go to the end of Matthew's story, there's no waiting. They're sent out. Only Luke's group was told to wait for 50 days, which takes us into the story of Acts. But what was so fantastic and where the revelation came that, that glued this all together was the story of 1 Corinthians 15, which towards the end of this, we're going to end up back in 1 Corinthians 15 again, but later on. This is what ended up happening. We read right here in 1 Corinthians 15, 4 through, uh, through 8, but in particular to 7, listen to what he says. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So when he rose the third day, we were told, and that he was seen of Caiaphas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren of once, 
of whom the greater part remain unto this present day, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And you say, whoa, 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 wait a second. I thought at his resurrection, he met with the group of 12 and some of the disciples, and that was it. No, he met with the 12 that relates to Matthew's group as the, as the, uh, uh, um, as the tribes. He met with Mark's group, which is a representation of the 144,000. And he met with Luke's group, which is the representation of the apostles. And it was this group here that he told, which is Luke's group's reference, the workers that will be chosen from the group with Luke when the bride of Christ is taken, there's going to be a group told that they're remaining to work. All right? This group right here is the group that was told to tarry for 50 days. This group and this group was not. And so when you realize that there was three groups that he met with, you say, oh my goodness, that was the revelation. That was the revelation of the seven times seven, okay? The seven times seven that brought us to here. And from here, we have what? Well, remember, this is the beginning of the story, right? We're going in reverse. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, which is in the was, right? When Christ was here, well, in the is to come, it's Luke, Mark, Matthew. So we still do the count according to according to the law, right? According to Leviticus and, and the Feast of Weeks. So you still do the count, which is seven times seven and then 50. Well, we've been revealed here in this ministry for a long time that the code to the end of days is 50 days, 14 years, and the 50th Jubilee. It was an incredible revelation, and it began on March 10th of last year, 2020. And the Lord revealed being right on target, which led us to all this stuff with the bull. Okay, it, It's a whole mass of stuff that came from this revelation of being right on target, bullseye, the bull, the whole nine yards. So in the end, what are we looking for? Well, if the end of days is beginning with 50 and then 14 years and then the 50th Jubilee, well, that would then mean that we're starting with Luke, 50 days. When the 50 days are over, that group of apostles that are chosen, they're going to work this period of Mark during their seven times seven, you see, or seven and seven, they're going to work Mark's time. When Mark's time comes to an end, there's a group, the 144, they're going to work Matthew's time. When Matthew's time comes to an end and it's time for the millennial reign, that group is going to work the millennial reign. It's incredible. And all three groups are right here. So we got the revelation of who Luke is speaking to and how it all begins. So this brings us back now to the stone's throw. This story with the stone's throw is only found in Luke's gospel. So what happens is we're looking at the resurrection story of Christ, all right? But in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, at the resurrection story, it looks like every single story is about the resurrection. But he met with one group at this time, he met with the second group at this time, and he met with the third group, Luke, at this time. So when he meets with Luke's group, when does he meet with them? He meets with them in hour from the, from the ox count or from the Taurus count. He's meeting with them at a boat right here. So in the story of Luke's resurrection, okay, in the story of Luke's, of Christ, in Luke, okay, of his resurrection, the entire story is what? Well, let's look at this, the 14th. Okay, I, it's the Gregorian calendar, but we're going to look at this as the 14th of Nisan, as Passover. Okay, Luke's story. There's uh, um, uh, 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 the, <laughs> the High Sabbath, all right? So watch this. Christ has the Passover meal 
with his disciples, okay, with the disciples, with the apostles on the evening of Passover. So soon as Passover begins, okay, soon as Passover begins in the evening, he has the Passover meal. After he has the Passover meal, he goes out and prays. In Luke 22, we see that he goes up on the mountain and he prays. And it's at about this time that he tells them, see, where did they go? He went on to the Mount of Olives and he says, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that you enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast. So he's telling us that he's a stone's throw away. Very wild stuff. Well, when you go to Mark's story, you don't read it. When you go to Matthew's uh, uh, crucifixion story, you don't read it. It's only found in Luke's. So since March of this year, before the greater portion of this revelation came, we were looking for this stone's throw to come sometime around here in March. Then we started thinking, okay, well, maybe. It's the Enoch calendar. And so we started looking for it at about here. Then we realized once and for all, it was the it was uh, where the Lord was leading us. And it was the time of Taurus with the sun and the moon, the time of Taurus. But it still wasn't here. Because at this point, we hadn't had the revelation of this Feast of Weeks. You following? So then we get the revelation of the Feast of Weeks. And this is like saying the story begins in Matthew. So you got the seven times seven. And when the seven times seven, it brought us to here. And this would be the time frame when he will then meet or when he then meets with the group in Luke. All right. Telling them yet 50 days. So if he's telling them yet 50 days. And it's the escape of the bride. You see, there's a very other key piece in Luke 24. And we've shared it many times in verse 3 going into verse 4. It says, And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed. Okay? Only in Luke do you find body of the Lord is gone and that they were perplexed. This is the escape of the bride of Christ. Okay? So early in the morning on the first day of the week. So if this is the Sabbath, okay, the true Sabbath of the 8th, then it's probably the escape time is probably somewhere, you know, early in the morning over here, 17th into 18th, you see? But we're talking about the stone's throw still. Okay? Only Luke had it. Luke's is the one to 50. He's meeting with them here. So what do we do? Well, let's go back to the point when he had the Passover meal. Then he was a stone's throw away. This is where we're looking sometime about the 14th of July. And as I'm talking to you right now, we're the 6th of July. I believe somewhere around the 14th of July, maybe a little bit earlier, maybe a little bit later, but somewhere around the 14th of July, I believe personally in this revelation that this is when we're going to see that meteor. Many people have had dreams and visions. Many people have had dreams and visions about it. And we had the revelation as to why it's spoken about in Luke chapter 22, where it's spoken about, he's giving us a clue. Now, we also understand from Luke chapter 21 that when the Lord is about to be seen, okay, when the Son of Man is coming in, right here, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, it literally means in. And it's a single cloud with power and glory. Then we're to look up because our, 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 our redemption is at hand. But look at what comes before that. Verse 25 and 26. 
in Luke's discourse, very different from Mark and Matthew's. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and in the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Look at that. That which are coming on which means to impend an impending attack that are going to arrive on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. No, I do not believe this is quote unquote alien. I believe this is the stone's throw. You know, some people lately have been talking about something hitting the moon, uh, uh, the sun. I don't know if it's hitting the sun. I don't know if, if something had hit Jupiter. I don't know. What I do know is that the scriptures have told us there's a stone's throw, that he is a stone's throw away. And only Luke's discourse speaks like this. Well, we can still take it a step further because the Gospel of John is a revelation of what we call chapters to years. Okay? So for anybody that's a little bit newer, here's our chapters to years chart, which is also in the description box under videos. And you'll find out, see this Luke, Mark, Matthew, we're in the Luke portion right now as I'm speaking to you, right up until the 50 days end and the Feast of Trumpets begin, okay? Right in here. Well, John, which is, if you look right at the beginning of John chapter 8, so you can say the end of the seventh, start of the eighth year, okay? When we go to John chapter 8, which is right around the time of the beginning of the 14 years to these 14 chapters, we see the Gentile woman who was caught in adultery, which is a representation of the Gentiles, right? An adulteress, just like a dog is a representation of Gentiles. The wording that we have here, Jesus went early in the morning and they came and sat to listen to him, is the exact same way that Luke's discourse ends in verse 37, 38, something like that. Okay, of, of Luke 21. And then what does it say? The woman is taken, brought before the Lord, and they say we should stone her. Jesus says, who is without sin? And listen to what he says, verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So in that whole group, they end up walking away because they all know they've sinned. But Christ is the only one out of that entire group who has never sinned. So who's the only one that can first cast a stone at her? See, do I think the bride is, is going to be here when it hits? No, I think as it's about to hit, the bride is gone. Okay, But it would be seen at the, at the stone's throw. There might be something seen in the sky coming, causing men's hearts to fail them, all right? But by the time it breaks up or however it's going to play out and it's about to hit the earth, the bride will be gone. Now, does it hit the entirety of the earth? Is it a portion of the earth? Is it, is it more one-sided, more to the Western? I have no idea, but men's hearts will be failing them, all right? There's going to be a snare coming upon the whole earth. So... I wanted you guys to be aware as this reminder that we need that in this time frame here, don't forget, this may very well be what the Lord is going to give us, that when we see it, we can go yell and proclaim to the world that the time is at hand, that the escape is about to take place. You know, many of you, as just a little side thought, Knowing, you know, this time frame here, if it does go to Sunday in the early in the morning before that attack takes place, it might very well be connected to what that little Swedish boy saw. OK, maybe we'll we will receive something. Uh, what did he say? It was Friday. I think he said it was Friday at 7 a.m. And for me over here, I think it worked out to 11 p.m. at night on Thursday. Maybe this is when something happens. Okay, we're right in that time frame. Because this is 
the time frame of the escape of the bride, the attack on Israel, the 50-day count begins, the Holy Ghost of Acts 2.0, the second attack happens on Jerusalem, and the 14 years begin on the day and hour no one knows. And this is why, this is why Luke does not talk about the day and hour no one knows. Okay? The day and hour no one knows being in Matthew and Mark and not in Luke is because when the Son of Man comes for 40 days, and for those of you saying, what are you talking about the Son of Man is coming for 40 days? Go to the playlist and watch the video of the Son of Man. Where is it? Right here. The 40 days of the Son of Man. The Son of Man is coming for 40 days after the bride has vanished. So it's going to be the escape of the bride. There's going to be a wedding week. All right? He's going to be gone for one week. And when that seven days is over, he's going to return to begin his 40 days as he said he would in Luke chapter 11. So let me show you this example, some examples or some scriptures to show what we're talking about. We don't want to spend too much time in these. We've covered these a number of times. But we see right here in Luke chapter 12, he tells them, let your lights be burning and you yourselves like men who wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open unto him immediately. And when he comes, he will sit down and serve them and so forth. This is that Luke group. This is that Luke group that he meets with when the bride escapes. Remember I said he's going to inform a group to be ready. And so when, he, when the bride is taken and he goes and he has that Gentile wedding gone for the week, when he returns from the wedding, it will be after seven days are complete. So sometime about the eighth day, after eight days, in that time frame of the eighth day, the Lord will come and begin his 40 days, and he will meet first and choose first this group that was ready and prepared and watching. This second watch and this third watch has to do when he comes at the end of the six seal judgments of after six years. And the third watch in Luke chapter 12 here has to do with when he comes after the sixth year of trumpets when he returns. Both of these cases is when he returns at the Feast of Trumpets after six years of seals and then after six years of trumpets. Okay? Both at the Feast of Trumpets. That's the reason for the day and hour no one knows in Mark for the second watch and in Matthew for the third watch. Okay, so there's one clue in relation to the first group when he returns from the wedding. Where else do we get this? Well, we also get it in Luke chapter 9. We've shared this one a lot. It's one of the, the main go-tos that we have. It's a massive revelation of the story of the transfiguration. The escape of the bride happens. The next thing you're going to see is the kingdom of God. Okay, the kingdom of God you're going to see. And it says, and it came to pass about an eight days later after these sayings. What sayings? These sayings. So about eight days later is when he returns after the wedding. And this will be the type and shadow here represented in the transfiguration story of his 40 days of the Son of Man. You can then go into Luke for crying out loud again into Luke chapter 11 when Jesus says, as Jonah was a sign, Jonah was a 40-day sign to Nineveh. Jesus says he will also be that sign for 40 days. And people have debated and said, oh, this is, this is from his resurrection. When he resurrected and he was here for 40 days. No, it's not. Because it said that he would be as Jonah was. And at Christ's resurrection, he did not do as Jonah did. He did not warn them. He did miracles and signs and wonders. He didn't go around warning the people, okay? Jonah warned for 40 days, and then destruction was coming. In Jonah's case, they repented. In this case, they won't. And the attack that will follow is the second attack on Jerusalem that we're talking about that will come right before, right at that time of the Feast of Trumpets, 
when the tribulation begins. That second attack will be Syria. They will it'll they'll come from the north. Okay? The Lord will deliver Jerusalem into their hands, okay? Because of their their disobedience. They're now going to be removed from the land for the next 7 years. So you see We've got things, the Lord coming after seven, about an eighth, about an eighth. He's coming for 40 days. He even told us by going in the story of Genesis and telling us about the story of the ark. He says, yet seven days, and it'll be 40 days and 40 nights. And then it says, uh, what does it say? Yet seven days. Where's the other one? And it came to pass after seven days. Well, what's after seven days? After seven days is the eighth day. And what's going to begin on that eighth day? The 40 days of the Son of Man. And look, you go to chapter 8. When the 40 days of the Son of Man, when the 40 days were over, he opened the window and the raven, the Antichrist spirit goes out, and then the dove. This is the 50 days. This is that right before trumpets. You know, that day or two before trumpets begins, there's your 50 days of the dove. And we're even told when this dove leaves at this point, because there was no rest for her feet, it even says the word for stayed means tribulation begins. And then it's seven days as years, seven days as years, seals and trumpets. So it's over and over and over again. It's the wedding week. It's the 40 days of the Son of Man. And it's the time to the Holy Ghost. Then what happens? Then it's the time of the seven final years of the church age. When the church age is done, it's over. And it goes back to the beginning. It goes back to the time for the Jews. Okay? So what ends up happening at the end of the Holy Ghost? They get that anointing, that Acts 2.0 anointing, we call. That's why this group at the end of 50, it's the Luke group. So you see what was 7 times 7 and then 50 in reverse is the 50 days, 7 times 7. But it's their years. And it will even end with the final Jubilee year of 50. It's so amazing. Now watch this. Now, we're at the Feast of Trumpets, 2021. It begins right in here with the attack on Jerusalem. They will be attacked. They will be destroyed by a smaller Syrian army and whoever's working with them. They will attack and destroy Jerusalem. It will be the second attack. There will already be devastation taking place on the earth. Remember the meteors falling, the stones throw, tens of millions of people vanished. All right. The Lord now must remove the Jews from the land. The entire revelation of that is found in Leviticus 26. Okay. For their disobedience. Okay. Punishment for disobedience. Their disobedience is what? Seven times. Seven times. It's seven years. Go read it for yourselves. We've talked about this many times. He's going to bring the sword upon them. This disobedience that you read about here is for their disobedience in the 50 years since they had Jerusalem. They've been disobedient. They never let the land rest every seventh year. So as much as they think they're about to get their temple rebuilt, they are not. They're about to be removed from the land. But Christians are saying, no, no. It, it, the church is saying, no, they're, they're going to rebuild their temple. There's some pastors that say, don't worry about the tribulation starting because the tribulation isn't going to start until they've built the third temple and then Antichrist steps in. That's messed up. <laughs> That's really messed up. You're going to be in for a big surprise if you're not ready and watching in the Lord. You see, that's scary stuff. So what's happening? Well, they've got to be removed for seven years. That's what Leviticus says for their punishment and their disobedience in the Jubilees. 
which means the Lord cannot build on that land. He even says, you're just, you're just dwelling in that land. You're, you're borrowing. Is it 25 or 26? As he's talking about the Jubilees. Yeah, listen to what he says. Okay, after the talk about the Jubilee, he says, the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. All right? So because of their disobedience, and the land being defiled, it is impossible for the Lord God to build the temple on that defiled land. So they must be removed now for seven years, starting at the time frame of the Feast of Trumpets of 2021. For the next seven years, they will be removed from the land, and it's the absolute reason why you read here in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25, verse 25, that you see that there's there's a, a, a decree that's going to be made to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. But it's not going to be rebuilt right away because you see this seven weeks, this represents seven years. This is the first seven years that they will be removed from the land before they can rebuild, completely in alignment with what Leviticus 26 was saying, okay? It's even in alignment. We can go to Luke 13, and Luke 13 is all about the fig tree, okay? For three years I've come, there is no fruit, there's no fruit on it, cut it down. The guy says, let me dung it, right? The, the owner of the vineyard says, let me dung it one more year. So they got four years addition. So they got 50 and then three years coming to visit and nothing. And then they got one more year to see if it's good. And we know it's not. So it got 50 plus three plus one, 54. And this past June, what did Jerusalem just, just observe? Their 54th year. Okay. The story with, Jer the story with Israel. Which, rep, which is a meaning of all the trees, which is a represented, representation of all the earth outside of the fig tree, outside of the Jews. What does it say? Leviticus 19 says it's when you come into the land that I shall give you, it's three years. Then you can take from the land. Israel this year, what did they observe? Their 73rd year. Both the 50th of, Israel, of Jerusalem and the 70th of Israel are this year. They just observed them. They just observed them. You see how beautiful that is? Because one was 67, the other was 48. The difference of one year and one had four, one had three addition to it. It's right on target. So, as we look at this again, and we consider these things, we say, okay, well, now that the tribulation, so Israel's now going to be, the Jews are going to be removed from the land. You, you, you want more proof? Let me just help you out. I know I'm still way at the beginning, but just watch this. Watch this. Remember Luke's discourse? Luke's discourse is a portion of time of about 50 days, that 40, 50 day time frame. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. So before nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay, before the great earthquakes and everything, he says before to let us know. So persecution is going to begin right away. But listen to what it says. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Depart out and don't let others that are in the countryside come in, for these are the days of vengeance. This is exactly what everything tells us about. We can go into, we can go into uh, Jeremiah chapter four. You can go into uh, when they're compassed about. Oh man, there's so many different places that talk about them being compassed about, and with with uh, the king of the north coming with a small army will defeat them because of Israel's disobedience, because they've got to be removed from the land. And we were told that when he does, when he comes that the attack would be at the year's end. 
You see? It's over and over and over. So now, Jerusalem is removed. So these are those first seven years. These are the seven weeks that I was just showing you, showing you in Daniel chapter 9. This is the seven years from Leviticus 26 that they're removed from the land for. And so what's happening during these seven years? Well, the seals are happening. World War III, famine, death, dearth, right? Is happening during the first seven years. And two and a half years in to the tribulation, meaning the tribulation starts at the Feast of Trumpets, 2021, okay? The sixth to the se uh, the seventh into the eighth, whichever day it's going to be. And according to scripture, about two and a half years into the tribulation, now it doesn't mean that the Antichrist won't already be here in some form, in some power, in some authority, because we know from the raven. Right? We know from the raven story with the ark, that's the type of shadow. The raven, the Arab, that's the Antichrist spirit going out. We know from, um, from Ishmael, the firstborn, 13 years, and then at the end of 13, 14 years, the promise, Yeshua comes. Okay, feet down on the Mount of Olives. It's the same type and shadow with Isaac to Christ. And Ishmael is the type and shadow of the Antichrist, and there he is at the beginning. <coughs> so. Yes, I agree The Antichrist and the spirit of Antichrist will be here from the beginning of tribulation. All right. However, the Antichrist will not receive his power, his additional power or his greater power to continue 42 months until about the time frame of 2024. Let me show it to you. So see, when the tribulation begins at the Feast of Trumpets 2021, Feast of Trumpets 2022, Feast of Trumpets 2022 to the Feast of Trumpets 2023, and another half year brings us to the spring of 2034, okay? So this is Trumpets 2023. This is to the end of, uh, um because what these years are, by the way, this is counting from Feast of Trumpets to Feast of Trumpets, okay? So this is Feast of Trumpets 2021 to the Feast of Trumpets 2022. From the Feast of Trumpets, whoops, from the Feast of Trumpets 2022 to the Feast of Trumpets, um, uh, 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 Feast of Trumpets 2023, okay? So, whoops, <laughs> uh... I'll leave it. <coughs> All right, so you get what I'm saying. Feast of Trumpets, 2020 to 2021. Feast of Trumpets, 2021 to 2022. Feast of Trumpets, 2022 to Feast of Trumpets, 2023. All right? So what we end up seeing and how we can prove this scripturally is we go to the book of Revelation. And this is a piece that I had a question about that people had questioned or had questions about, especially because of the vaccine, right? I, the vaccine, guys, I don't recommend the vaccine. I am not taking it. My family is not taking it. We do not recommend it to anybody. However, is it the mark of the beast? I've said it before. It cannot be the mark of the beast. Because the beast isn't here. Neither is the second beast, the false prophet. So let me clarify this and show you this understanding of this time frame and what we're looking at here within the first seven years of seals. Listen to what it says. Okay, the first beast rose up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his, crown, upon his horns ten crowns. The name of blasphemy written. Uh, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as a bear. And his mouth was as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. 
Okay? Well, how does tribulation begin? The tribulation begins, according to the discourses, the tribulation begins after the 50 days. It will then be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay? And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. And these are the beginning of sorrows. This is telling you that World War III, the whole world caught off guard. That World War III and nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and the famines and the pestilence and the troubles, all of these things being the beginning of sorrows, are literally World War III. And they're called only the beginning of sorrows. Do you know how freaky that is? When we're being told World War III is the beginning of sorrows? Let me show you what Daniel tells us. In Daniel chapter 7, you see, the beast had what? Well, the beast was lion, bear, leopard. So if we go to Daniel, what do we see in Daniel chapter 7? We see that there were four great beasts come out, one from a uh, diverse, one from another. The first was like a lion. The second was like a bear. The third was like a leopard. Okay? And dominion was given it. The fourth one stamped the residue with his feet. And what did it have? And it was diverse from all the other beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. So this fourth beast is the one that has the ten horns. So when we go back into the book of Revelation, <coughs> excuse me, and we see that this beast is like a leopard, so it has the body of the leopard. I've said it many times. I believe it's Germany that will be the control center for the beast and the beast system. It says it has the feet of the bear. That's Russia will be its army, will be its strength and its power. And it has the mouth of a lion. The mouth of the lion, I believe that's Assad. All right? There's incredible stories about the family of Assad that you can, you can research, all right? So Bashar al-Assad. Uh, al and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and authority. So the question is, the biggest question is, okay, he has the ten horns, the ten crowns on it. This is the fourth beast, which is the, the power of all of these things are now in his control. And the dragon gave him his authority. So what's the dragon doing at about mid-seals? I thought Satan doesn't come till mid-trumpets. Well, that's true. But guess what? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, here's the beginning. The great woman appears, and what do we see? And she cried. Uh, uh, and she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. This right here is the beginning of sorrows. This is Mark's beginning of sorrows that it talked about. This is all about the tribulation beginning in World War III. And our sister, and our sister Jamie found this word for cried, meaning as a raven. Croaking or a scream as a raven. Isn't that appropriate? It's right at the beginning of the tribulation. Right at the time when the Antichrist spirit is here. And the travailing begins. You see, if the travailing begins here, then that means the bride's already gone, you see? But now we're talking about the dragon. What is the dragon doing there at about mid-seals? Or that, you know, after this portion of the, the, the beginnings of sorrows. The about two and a half years of World War II and those things taking place. Well, just like we read in Revelation 13, look at what we see. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. See, the great red dragon. But where is he? He's above. Okay? Somewhere in the sky. I have no idea what it's going to look like. I don't... You know, these are all images, imagery for us, right? But we have the dragon where? In this portion of seals. This is seals to the end of verse 5. 
Okay, and then they're going to flee away. The woman flees away for the first, this is the first half of trumpets in verse 6. Okay, so this is the seals. And here we are at about after the portion of the beginning of sorrow, we have the dragon. And so when we go into 13 and we say, well, what's the dragon there? Well, now it makes sense. It's the dragon that gives him his power. When? Well, if the lion, the leopard, the bear, meaning what? Assad has attacked Jerusalem already. The bear of Russia is the one that, that, that was maybe the one that attacked the West, that attacked America. All right? That World War III time broke out. And then you have Germany as the control center that will, that will probably do bring order, if you will, in the midst of this, or will be where everything is controlled out of, like we know with, uh, uh, um, shoot, I can't remember it right now, but we know that Babylon building and the woman riding the beast, right? All over there. That will be the control center. <coughs> so we can understand when this is. If there's been no lion attack yet, if there's been no bear attack yet, if there's been no uh, leopard takeover yet, um, you see what I'm saying? We're not at the mark of the beast yet. So now listen to this. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded unto death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. Hmm. There's not no, nobody all over the place wondering after the beast. You see, and what does he do? And he speaks, uh, and it was given to him a mouth to uh, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months to continue 42 months and he opened his mouth and blaspheme against god you see in everything the this antichrist person this antichrist spirit will do is always speaking and blaspheming blaspheming against god and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred and tongue and nations. This hasn't happened yet. Okay. This hasn't happened. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay. So those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they will never take it when the mark comes. You following? It won't matter what he does. They won't follow him. But now let's read a little bit further. We see, well, in fact, no, let's finish this up. In verse 10 of Revelation 13, he leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Well, there isn't a global captivity for those being caught as Christians who are refusing to be obedient to this guy. All right. This is showing that the saints during that time, they cannot take out a sword and be killing people to defend themselves. All right. They're not to report other people and say, well, don't take us. There's that family across the way. Go to them. You do that and you're going to be sent into captivity. You kill with the sword, you're going to be killed with the sword. But now listen to the second one. The second beast shows up and it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And to him he had two horns of the lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And that hasn't happened yet. You see, when we see stories of people saying, well, no, no, it's the mark of the beast. It's the mark of the beast. Well, where's the Antichrist? Well, it's kind of like the Antichrist is already here. And No. You see, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And what I mean by that is if you believe in a pre-trib, then you cannot believe it's the mark of the beast. You follow? People, I've even heard some people say, that it's the mark of the beast that, that Satan messed with time 
and and he he was able to manipulate to make it the mark of the beast come first then why do we have scripture why would we be given prophecy that lets us know this time frame lets us know what things are going to be taking place at that time what would be the point if he can just skip the line with all the things he wants to do now i'm not saying the vaccine isn't going to be something that that is part of the end part of the 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 mark of the beast that's coming but it is not the mark of the beast you're not damned to hell if you've taken the vaccine it's probably not the healthiest thing and or the best thing you've done considering all this nefariousness of wanting to get the whole world to do it we know it's part of something taking place but it cannot be the mark of the beast. It's not the complete, okay? It could be part of it, but it's not the the damning part that ruins it all. Because let's continue to read what it says. And he does great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that. And deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he has the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Uh, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed is everybody yet is it a time of everybody running yet is it a time of every every christian fleeing because they're not worshiping this image that was built this image that's put up that we're all fleeing for our lives that we should be killed if we don't worship it and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in, are you ready for this? It's the word on. In their right hand or in, it's the word on, their foreheads, that they might, that no man might buy or sell, save he have the mark or the number uh, or the name of the beast or his number. Okay, this is a very important thing. Let me show you this. This word in compared to on is a big deal because I'll prove it to you in relation to Christ when he's coming. You see, when Christ comes for the escape, for the bride of Christ, he's seen coming in a cloud. Okay, those that are his will see him coming in the cloud. See, and the word in means in in mark's discourse when the lord's coming at the end of the sixth seal at the time of trumpets the feast of trumpets it says and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds so again he's in the clouds he's not going to be seen knowingly by the whole world the world is going to freak out because they know something's coming they they see this thing coming but he's in the clouds. In Matthew, in his discourse, we see when Christ comes, he's coming, the Son of Man coming in, which means on. He's coming on the clouds. And this is exactly correct. This is when the whole world will see him coming at the At the end of the sixth year of trumpets, which is the total of 13 years, at the end of the 13 years, when he comes after the sixth trumpet, at the end of the sixth trumpet, all done, and he comes at the Feast of Trumpets 13 years from this September, from Feast of Trumpets 13 years later, Feast of Trumpets, at the day and hour no one knows, the whole earth will know that he's here. They will see him as lightning from one end unto the other. So you see, he's not in, 
He's on. So when we take this back into the book of Revelation and we take it to Revelation 13 again and we look at this more carefully, it is on the right hand. Do you know people get the vaccine, they also get it in the left arm? It didn't say in the right or in the left. You know, I've heard the definitions that people say, well, on the right hand, it could also mean arm. Okay? And I agree it could also mean arm, like like Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father. Okay, he's at the right side of him. But people are getting vaccined on the left side as well. And it's not anything about being in, it says on. All right? These aren't things to be such mysteries to us that we're to never understand them. Do you understand that? I always, I'm always reminded of what, um, of what Sir Isaac Newton said. All right, a big prophecy guy, huge prophecy guy, and he knew that in the end of days there would be a group of men and women. But he said that there would be a group of men that would seek the literal interpretation of the time of the end. Those mysteries, even that Daniel didn't know, that he couldn't know, even even Isaac Newton in his time. Because it wasn't time. But the time would come at the time of the end that there would be a group of people seeking the literal interpretation of these things. That's what we've been given. That's what we've been doing for almost four years. We're being given the literal interpretation and the opening of these things to understand them. And so if it's supposed to be so complicated that nobody would know what they're getting, why would the Lord do that? I don't get it. Why would the Lord make it so complicated? Why would, why would it be hidden that the first beast must be here? And this first beast is a combination of the first three that was, that was World War III. And then a second beast would come and there would be an image and he would promote and do miracles and signs to, to deceive the people to worship this guy. And it's the second one that causes everybody to get this mark or to worship him. It's not yet. You either believe in pre-trib or you believe that we're already in the tribulation and that's why you're saying it's the mark of the beast. But you can't have them both, right? See what I'm saying? Okay, let's look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6 at the red horse rider. Okay, the second seal, the red horse rider. To take peace from the earth that they should kill one another and there was given a great sword. What is this? This is nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. This is literally the beginning of tribulation. And when Mark said what? When Mark said, the beginning of sorrows. So you following? When two and a half years into seals, after there's been two and a half years of World War III and of chaos and people freaking out because tens of millions of people had vanished, famines are going rampant, the store's empty. Do you understand what's going to happen when, when tens of millions of people vanish? I mean, there's going to be an incredible time during those two and a half years in the midst of World War III and all the chaos. It's going to be the time of the greatest revival in the history of all humanity that ever will be and ever was. But it's going to come at the most severe of costs. What do you think is going to happen? People are going to be running to the stores. They're going to be running to the stores. Everything's going to be empty. That's why it says famine and everything else will, will begin. You see, if it's like those first four seals, it's not like it's one year, the second year, the third year. That's not what, I'm, that's not what I say when I show the chart. It's not one year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. The first four were probably going to release at about the same time. 
but they will all have their portion where one will end, another one will start, some will overlap, but they will have their portion, <clears throat> their most powerful portion in their appropriate time. Now, let me prove this out. That Antichrist will receive that power and authority to continue 42 months, even though he will already have a position and some power. But the time when he's when he's to be worshipped and all that comes is when he gets his power to continue 42 months. Okay, and in fact, let me just show you that a little bit better with another little piece right here. You see, who they they wonder at him because why his deadly wound was healed, and who is able to make war with him? Okay, when you come down to this second beast that's going to do all these wonders and signs to get people to follow him, what does it tell us? It tells us the same time frame. See, uh, them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Okay? So at the time frame of the timing of his deadly wound being healed is that time frame, approximately that time frame, when he's given power now and authority to continue 42 months. Okay? We can see it there. <clears throat> now, Let's go, okay, so 42 months. Now, here's the thing. If he receives that power somewhere around Passover 2024, and he's got 42 months, that means three and a half years later, which is a total from the beginning of the seven years of tribulation, that's a total now of six years, two and a half years of tribulation of world war three and so forth at the two and a half year point he gets his power to continue 42 months when he gets his power to continue 42 months that'll be three and a half years coming to an end <coughs> that will make a total of six years okay six years to the end of the sixth seal judgments okay it doesn't mean it's one a year like i said but those six seals will be over a total period of six years. Then what do we see? The Lord coming on Mount Zion, and it'll be the Feast of Trumpets 2027. Let's prove this out. Okay? First of all, we go to the sixth seal. What do we see at the end of the sixth seal? Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of, his, of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall stand? So there it is. Right at the end, when the sixth seal has come to an end, <coughs> they see him coming. Now they see it, they see him coming, they understand it's him, but it's in the clouds. What this is going to look like, I have no idea, but it's going to be wild. Because he's coming on heavenly Mount Zion. Now, how do we know that at this point, is when he's going to kill the Antichrist. How do you know this is when the Antichrist time comes to an end? Well, let's confirm the timing by going into Mark 13. In Mark 13, we've shared this before. This was an awesome little nugget of revelation. In Mark 13, you see when, his, when in his discourse, when the tribulation begins, and it's World War III and the famines, and these are the beginnings of tr troubles. These are the first two and a half years. Okay, but take heed and so forth. So what do we see? There's no mention of Antichrist, no mention of false prophets. It's not until the abomination of desolation. This is that timing of worshiping and the mark of the beast and so forth. This is the mark of the beast placed where it ought not. And then what do we see? False Christs and false prophets. Now, just like we saw, it's a time when he gets his power to continue, and it's the time when the second beast, the false prophet, is promoting him to the whole world that we should all that everybody should worship him. And then what do we see? Then we see it's the coming of the Son of Man. And what do we know about this time of the coming of the Son of Man? But of that day 
in that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Okay? Just like we said, it says day and hour. If he wanted to say month and year, like we showed at the beginning, he could have continued and said month and year. But why did he say this? Because they understood when he was telling them. They understood this meant the Feast of Trumpets. So with the tribulation beginning at the Feast of Trumpets, six years later, when the sixth seal comes to an end, what would it be? The Feast of Trumpets. So there he is coming at the end at Feast of Trumpets. But the rapture doesn't happen yet. That's just the Lord coming at the end of six years at the Feast of Trumpets. But what does this have to do with him getting rid of the, the Antichrist? <clears throat> Remember, false Christs and false prophets are now at the second half, but they weren't in the first half. Neither of them was. Okay? So they're both there, false Christs and false prophets. But now we go to we go to Daniel. We go to Daniel chapter 7. Sip of cold coffee. Love it because it's good coffee. All right. We shared this. This is this is the part of tribulation, right? This is the beginning of tribulation. This is the attack on Israel. This is World War III then breaking out. This is the leopard having having the control. And then you have the fourth beast, this Antichrist time, the ten horns, and so forth. Well, look what happens. Look what happens. And he considered the horns. Verse 9, Daniel 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair, the hair of his head as pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Do you know why they're freaking out at the end of the sixth seal? Because this is what they're seeing in the clouds. They're seeing fiery flames and that burning wheels of fire. They're seeing what Ezekiel described. And they're freaking out. And it says, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, uh, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were open. And listen to this. I beheld then because of the voice of great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and giving, given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away and their lives were prolonged for a season and time. <clears throat> so as much as there's a battle when they try to come and attack against them, the leaders, the kings and so forth, he doesn't kill any of them, but their dominion and everything they had is taken away. The only one killed is the beast. The only one killed is the beast. Look at what we see in verse 13 and 14. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds. Isn't that what Mark says? With the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him before near, and there was given him dominion and glory and kingdom, and the nations came. Now, who's the only one that was killed? Outside of, yes, the war and everybody that died in that battle coming against them. But the, out of the leaders, only the beast was killed. The false prophet was allowed to live. Okay? The beast was killed, but the false prophet was allowed to live. Well, now, when we go to... Matthew's discourse, remember I said it was that nugget, I've talked about it before. In Mark's discourse, the beginning of tribulation of seals, there was no false prophet and no and no uh, 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 no antichrist, right? That that was mentioned there with this authority and power that was really now in place. It wasn't until the second half, that approximate second half, 
that the false Christs and false prophets show up. So now only Antichrist is killed. Only that beast is killed out of the leaders. But false prophet is still around. And look at what happens when we go to Matthew. This nation against nation, this battle taking place again, this portion taking place of the craziness during trumpets. And look what's look what we see. Matthew is now the seven years of trumpets. And during the approximate first half of trumpets, what do we see? No false Christs, only false prophets. Why? Because at the Lord's return at the end of six years at the Feast of Trumpets, he destroyed the Antichrist. The beast was killed. So there's only the false prophet. And then you see standing in the holy place. Now we got this abomination of desolation because why? Then shall arise. And what do we see? False Christs is back in the mix again with false prophets. Why is that? That's because when the Antichrist is killed and about the time frame of Feast of Trumpets 2027, when the Lord comes on heavenly Mount Zion and destroys the beast, the beast is killed out of the leaders, but the, Antichrist, uh, the, the false prophet is allowed to keep living. And so when we get to the seven years of trumpets, this first half of trumpets, while they're rebuilding the city and the streets and so forth in Jerusalem, while the trumpet judgments are still falling on the earth, the false prophet is still here. The false prophet is still here. But the Antichrist has been killed. It's not until the three and a half years of trumpets are passed that we then see the false prophets show up again. And the reason for this is given to us in Revelation 17. Okay? Again, we shared this before. I don't want to, I won't take too much time on it. But we see the beast that thou saw was, because the 42 months of seals, is not because the first half of trumpets and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Because at the midpoint of trumpets, when Messiah is cut off after three and a half years, when Satan is cast down, the pit is opened. That's when the pit is opened and he will be brought out of the pit. And that's why Antichrist is there again. You see, you see how this all is exactly in alignment with each other. So now let's back up a little bit. We're here. The Lord has returned on heavenly Mount Zion. The, the world panicked and freaked out. The, the great battle there happens. That's that first battle. This is what we call the first sword. All right. This is that first sword. So what we see is in this final year, from Feast of Trumpets 2027 to Feast of Trumpets 2028, he will have defeated Antichrist, okay? And those that, that battle of those that came against him. But out of the leaders, like I said, Antichrist is now killed. Then he's going to seal the 144,000. And then it will be the rapture of the great multitude at about Passover of 2028. And the seventh seal is about five months during the time from Passover 2028 to the Feast of Trumpets 2028. This will be the end of the seven years of seals. This first sword, I talked about it earlier. There are two swords. Let me show you. In Luke chapter 22. See, this is why Luke knows all things. <laughs> Luke knows all things, brothers brothers and sisters. That's why he's got it all in his. We keep going to him. You see, we talked about that funny story. We recently just spoke about this funny story, right? He tells them, hey, everybody who doesn't have a sword, he's there. He's talking with disciples and a group of people. And he says, whoever doesn't get have a sword, go sell your garments, sell whatever you have and get a sword. And so a group talk among themselves. 
And they're like, uh, you got a sword? Yeah, I got a sword. Yeah. Do you have a sword? No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, who else has a sword? Okay, we got two. So they turn around after the Lord told them to go get swords and to sell what they had. They then turn around and they said, Lord, behold, we have two swords. And Jesus, some strange reason, he says, okay, that's enough. It's, it's the strangest story that can never be understood. If you don't understand the 14 years, you see, so this first sword that we're talking about, this first sword that I'm telling you about right here is his defeat at the end of seals when he defeats the Antichrist. Okay, it's his defeat of the Antichrist in that first battle. The second sword is when he returns at the end of the sixth year, when he's seen by the whole earth from one end unto the other. All right, we'll get to that in a moment. So all of this is the breakdown. So, so what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing that the true mark of the beast isn't until about two and a half years when it's this worshiping of the Antichrist, when he gets his power to continue, when, when tribulation, when, when, um, when World War III has already happened, when the pre-tribulation has already taken place, the Son of Man has already been here. You see, how are these people going to know not to take the mark of the beast during tribulation? The apostles and the disciples working. They're the ones bringing about this great revival because their power is going to be the power greater than Christ had when he was here. It's going to be Acts 2.0 on a global mass scale never seen before by men in all of human history. This is the power these guys will have. All right? We're talking about end of days power, the last of the age of the Gentile church, of, of the church to be brought in. It's going to be incredible outpouring during the judgment. You see? So now, what ends up happening? The seventh seal takes us to trumpets of 2028. At the beginning of trumpets is now what? The second seven years. And it, if it's the second seven years, that means Israel or Judah, the Jews have been removed from the land for seven years. So their disobedience, they've been removed out of there for seven years. With one little thing at the three at, at some time in about the four year mark, they will allow the, the the foundation of the temple to be built. But that's all that's going to be laid in the fourth year during this seven. So now that the seven years they've been removed from the land, for seven years the land has had rest. What do you think happens during the next seven? The first three and a half years are going to be devastation with a third of the earth, uh, a third of the trees burnt, a third of the waters turned to blood, a third of the fresh waters turned to blood. It's going to be craziness during a time while Jerusalem is surrounded and protected. Mount Zion is there and the city and the streets will begin to rebuild. And it will begin from about the time of the Feast of Trumpets. 2028 for three and a half years the lord will be there you see we saw him coming at the end of the sixth seal right at the end of the six years then we know what he's doing for that final year we see the 144 we saw we see the rapture take place we've got the approximate timing of it we we have the, the, the seventh seal and the approximate duration of that seventh seal or the, the timing of it. Meaning when it's over, it's Feast of Trumpets yet again. It's Feast of Trumpets yet again. And this time, the Lord will remain for three and a half years to fulfill his second three and a half years this time for the house of Judah. 
This time it's for the house of Judah. The first time he came, it was for the house of Israel, for the lost tribes. We shared that a couple videos ago. And when he came and it was for the house of Judah, then the Gentiles got grafted in. You see, but Judah was excluded. This time it's for Judah. Okay, so he will be there on Mount Zion, Jerusalem, the city and the streets will be rebuilt. Just like Daniel 9 tells us. You see, Daniel 9 then goes on to tell us after those seven years. After those seven years or seven weeks, it's then three score in two, which is a representation of three and a half years while the city and the streets are being rebuilt. It says even in troublous times. Why do you think it says even in troublous times? Because he's going to be he's going to be on Zion. He's going to be ruling, if you will, in the midst of his enemies. Let me show you that one. Go to Psalms one ten. I was gonna I was gonna open with this today, and I don't even know if I should really share it with you guys because it's pretty crazy. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna go too far down this one. But it said, a Psalm of David. Right? We talked about this in a previous video. The Lord, this is the Father, said unto my Lord, this is Jesus, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord, the Father, shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Who is the rod of the strength going out of Zion? Well, it's the Lord there, right? It's Jesus there. His Father, remember, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And they're on Zion. And what does it say? Who are the ones that are going to go out as, as his rod? Well, the 144,000 are. When he's there on Zion in trumpets, it's the 144,000 who are going to be sent out. And what does it say? He's going to rule in the midst. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. See? Right on time. He's going to be ruling in the midst of his enemies while devastations are taking place. Of course, he's still going to be ruling in the midst of his enemies. What do you think? The, the world is going to be still chaotic when a third of everything is dying. Right? A third of everything is dying off. So let's go back. All right, so we saw that in Daniel 9. Oh, then you can also take it to Zechariah. So this three and a half years, we go to Zechariah, and what do we see? The Lord is here on Mount Zion, he says. It's the holy mountain of the Lord. The Lord has returned to dwell in the midst of Zion. It'll be the holy mountain of the Lord. Let your hands be strong. Okay, They're going to start building the temple on the foundation that was laid. You couldn't do anything for seven years prior because of the affliction. Okay, All right on target. So this is the beginning of trumpets. 2028. So this is one year, two years, three years. And if you go halfway through chapter 11 for three and a half years, we have the type and shadow of what? Satan's been cast out. And Christ is going to what? And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder that I might break my covenant, which I made with all people. You see, Christ is going to make a covenant at the end of seals, and he's going to make the covenant with all people. Right? And they'll be brought back into their land, and they're going to rebuild the city and the streets and the temple. But three and a half years later, he's being cut off. He's got to break his covenant. You see, because Satan's been cast down. This is why we have that 30 pieces of silver. It relates to Matthew. We spoke on all those things before. Okay, so now what happens? Now, because Satan's been cast down, Messiah's got to be cut off. And so three and a half years into it, that cutoff will be at about Passover of 2032. He will be the Passover bull. He will be the red heifer sacrifice. We spoke about that, right? Next, uh, This time it's the bull's turn. So he's cut off in 2032 at about Passover. Now, where do we see this? 
we can go to Revelation chapter 12. <coughs> Revelation chapter 12. You see in chapter 5, this is when he was to rule all nations with a rod of iron because he's here. The 144,000 are going to do that for him while he's there on Mount Zion. And there's the rapture. You see, this isn't the pre-trib rapture. This is the end of seals rapture we talked about. The pre-trib happens before the travailing in pain. All right. So now what happens? Now you got the 1260 days. During the 1260 days, there's a battle going on in the heavens. Satan and Michael and their angels fighting against each other. And Satan loses. And he's cast down to the earth. And when he's cast down, he's going to go after them. And when he goes after them, we know that what? They're taken away into the wilderness on the wings of a great eagle for a time, time, for a time and times and half a time. So there's a group of people from the midpoint of trumpets when Messiah is cut off, when Satan's been cast down, that are going to be kept away in protection until the last three and a half years are done. So they're going to be in a protection until the time of the Feast of Trumpets, 2035. That's how long they're going to remain there in a place protected. Okay? This is what we find out right here. But Satan's rule isn't that long. And when is Satan cast down? Well, we know at the fifth trumpet. Okay? At the fifth trumpet... Okay, we had one, two, three, four in chapter eight of Revelation. <coughs> Let's go to them. We have one, two, three, four trumpets. Okay, where a third part of the earth, a third part of the of the seas, a third part of the fresh waters, the fountains, right, are turned to blood and so forth. Then it's woe, woe, woe for the three remaining that are coming. Okay, the three remaining trumpets. And what's the fifth one? When the pit is open. When Satan has been cast down and the pit is open. What period of time is this? This is the same period of time when Messiah is cut off, when Satan's, when Satan's been cast out, when Messiah has been cut off, the pit is open, and who was here? Who was still around during the three and a half years? The false prophet was. He was probably in hiding somewhere, right? But the false prophet was still alive. But now we're at about Passover 2032. Messiah's cut off. Satan's been cast down. The pit has been opened. And who comes back? The Antichrist. That beast comes back again. <clears throat> so at this point, during the next two and a half years of Satan's rule, through the next, so the last three and a half years are left, okay? But Satan gets two and a half years of those final three and a half years. And we know this because of Daniel. Well, we, we know it because of Zechariah as well, but we know this because of Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12, he says, How long is this going to last, right? And they're told that it'll be for a time, times, and a half. There's no plus between the two times. There's no and. So it's one, two, and a half. Till they have scattered all the holy people, all things shall be finished. Okay? So Satan gets two and a half years. We get this also in Zechariah at the midpoint, like we said, in Zechariah 11, which is three and a half years, one, two, three, and a half being represented in chapter 11 when Messiah is cut off. And how long is he cut off for? Well, the half of 11, 12, 13. So when 13 is over, two and a half years are done, Messiah comes at the beginning of the 14th year. At the, You can say the end of the 13th, beginning of the 14th year. There he is. The Lord having gone forth, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. What day of battle? 
could he have possibly already fought? That's right. That's right. You got it. As when he fought at the Feast of Trumpets 2027, representing the first sword. So now what's happened? Satan had two and a half years of rule going crazy. I mean, they're eating people. I mean, it's crazy stuff when you read it. You can read it in Zechariah 11. They'll be eating the arms of each other. I mean, it's it's absolute horrendous. And then when his two and a half years are done, what happens? It'll be over at the Feast of Trumpets 2034. So what is this Feast of Trumpets 2034 when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives? It's Matthew. <coughs> it's Matthew when the Lord coming in or on, I should say, coming in on the clouds. And what is it? The day and hour, no one knows. It is the Feast of Trumpets 2034. And in that final year, when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives from 2034, during that final year, it will be uh, it will be during the final year from 2034 to 2035, he destroys all who came against Jerusalem. And the, and the Lord will defeat with the second sword and bind Satan for a thousand years. This is the second sword that Zechariah is talking about by telling us as when he fought in the day of battle. This one is the second one. You see how awesome that is? everything there's there's not a there's not a glimpse there, there's not a blip anywhere that's out of place in fact you can even take this to the book of revelation and take it to the end of the second woe see the end of the second woe this is the end of the second uh, of the sixth trumpet okay there's a great earthquake because the lord will have come feet down on the mount of olives and look at what it says the kingdoms of this world are now the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. This is still one more year to go. This is when he comes at the end of 13 years. This is when he comes at the Feast of Trumpets 2034, the day and hour that Matthew said no one knows. Do you realize, do you see now how, how way off that was? Because everybody's foundation having been built on Matthew. With everybody's foundation having been built on Matthew, they think the Feast of Trumpets or the day and hour no one knows is the rapture. It has nothing to do with it. It's literally the end of the portion of the tribulation of seals and trumpets. When he will defeat all of those who came against. Go read Zechariah 14 for yourself. You know what else it is? It's not only Zechariah 14. It's Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. <clears throat> you see, this three and a half years, they were rebuilding the city and the streets. The first half of trumpets till Messiah is cut off. Why? Because the people of the prince that are coming, they're destroying. They're going after the woman with the flood, right? And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. What war? The war that he makes against the 144. When he goes after her with a flood, when she's when mid-trumpets and they're fleeing and they're taken away on the wings of an eagle for th the final three and a half years. But remember, Satan's time and the enemy's time with the false prophet and now the Antichrist back, right? The, the beast. What happens? Well, all three of them are there. <clears throat> when the Lord comes in the final year. It's all three of them there again. And what does the Lord do? He's going to confirm that covenant that he had to break when Satan come came. Now that he's returned feet down on the Mount of Olives for the whole world to see, Satan is going to be bound for the thousand years. 
and all who came against Jerusalem, all the nations of those who came against are going to be destroyed. And he's confirming his covenant that he had broke. He's confirming it now for that final year. You following? And look at what we also get. This brings us to that portion of the bulls. It says, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblations to cease. Why? Because of what Satan and them were doing in the temple. They were causing the sacrifices and the oblations. And for the overspreading of abominations, see, it was Satan and the Antichrist and those guys that were causing the overspreading of abominations. They were doing the abominations. That's why this he is Christ in the final year. He shall make it desolate. He's going to destroy it because of all the desolations that these guys did. Even until the consummation. Even until the completion of the destruction. And that determined shall be poured. <clears throat> shall be poured upon the desolate. What does this sound like? Sounds like the bulls, right? Well, remember I said people were asking also about the bulls, and we don't have a video just talking about the bulls. And one of the reasons is because the bulls are a very short period of time. The bulls or vials, they're a very short period of time. And we needed, you see, what people needed to determine is some people would say, well, is it after the millennium? Is it is it before the millennium? Is it is it before trumpets? Is it after trumpets? Well, you get one clue right here, right off the bat, that this pouring out is taking place at some point during that 14th year, during that final year. So let's go have a look at the book of Revelation and get some clues in relation to these bowls or these vials. Okay? Another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven plagues, it's the wrath of God. Have, uh, um, and I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten victory over the beast. Okay? And they sang a new song. Um, let's go to... <coughs> oh, it's a very short one. This is, this is the setup. Okay? Chapter 15 is the setup. The vials full of the wrath of God. Let's go to 16. And look at what these judgments are. Okay, they're full of the wrath of God. The first one is grievous sores that come on those who have the mark of the beast, which means you're going to see that it means those who had the mark of the beast were still around during the trumpet judgments, during those that the, the yeah, during the trumpet judgments. Because look at what it says next. The second one. Uh, it says, the angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man, and every living soul in the sea died. The third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became as blood. Now, remember I said when we were in trumpets, and you see the, the first four trumpets, and we see... The, where is it? The second one, we see a um, great mountain burning with fire ca into, uh, uh, cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. You get to the third angel. And a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp fell upon the rivers of water. Okay. And a third part of the waters became wormwood. Probably in the time frame of 2029. You see, remember what I said. We know during trumpets, trumpets are going to begin at trumpets of 20, at the Feast of Trumpets 2028, the time of trumpets will begin. But it doesn't mean they will be one one year, one the next year, right? Isn't there a prophetic word out there right now that Wormwood is coming sometime in 2029? That's during trumpets. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to land in 2029, or that it'll hit right away from, from when it's passing, but in that time frame. That is during the trumpet's time. Okay? So what do we see? My point here is that it's a third of the waters. But when we get to the bowls, it's all the waters. Okay? 
All the sea turned to blood. All of the, the freshwater fountains turned to blood. So clearly, it's after the trumpet judgments. Now, what do we see? Okay, they get to drink blood now. And it says, the fourth angel poured out, scorched men with fire. Listen to the fifth one. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. You see, this was definitely something that would have caught everybody off guard saying, a big head scratcher saying, wait a second. How on earth is the fifth bowl or the fifth vial being poured upon the seat of the beast? Well, now you know. Because the seed of the beast, the beast was brought back to life, remember? Remember? He was during the second half of trumpets. He is not, uh, sorry, of seals. He is not during the first half of trumpets. Then when the pit is open, he's going to come out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. That was why I told you guys before, <clears throat> he's killed, but the false prophet is still alive. You get to the first portion of Matthew uh, of the of the tribulation of trumpets and the false prophet is only there because it's the is not time of the beast of the Antichrist. But then at the midpoint, what do we see? Bang! Antichrist and false prophet again because at that mid trumpets time, it will be Satan now having been cast down. It'll be the false Christ which is, we call the beast, and the false prophet. All three of them will be here. That's how it happens. This is how, whoops, let's go back to Revelation chapter 16. This is how it's going to be poured out upon his seat because he's still here. Now, here's the thing. This is a major clue, an obvious clue in what is said about the fifth vial and what happens, because that means the beast is still here. The beast hasn't yet been cast in to the, to, uh, um, uh, 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 what do they call it? The, the, the pit of fire. Okay, I'll show you what I'm getting at in a second. If the beast is still here, and the false prophet is still here, well, then he hasn't been given to the to the eternal flame yet, okay? So you'll see what I'm getting at in a second. So there's the seed of the beast to which this is going to be poured on, and they're going to be in pain and gnawing their teeth, right? Then it says, the great river Euphrates, <coughs> the water thereof was dried up that might make way for the kings of the east, uh, might that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the beast, and out of the false prophet. Now, let me ask you, if the false prophet and the beast, the Antichrist, are put into everlasting flame before the millennial reign, how is it that all three of them could have their spirits like frogs coming out of them, going into the kings and the people of the earth. You following? This, these are proofs. These are absolutely telling us that this is that time of the end of trumpets. It is not after the millennium, clearly not after the millennium. It is before the millennium. And it says, Okay, the spirits, uh, uh, for they are spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And it talks about gathering them to Armageddon. Okay, then you've got the seventh bull. God says it is done. And it's the talons, right? Talons, uh, these stones that are being cast on these people. Oh, they're 60 to 130 pounds, these talons, weight of a talon, these great hails falling on them. So now the question is, this is clearly telling us that the bulls 
are before the millennial reign. For the bulls to be before the millennial reign, this must be a relatively short period of time during the final year of trumpets. Okay? Because all three of them are still there and he still has his seat. So let's go have a look a little bit further. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Okay, we see much rejoicing in heaven. Let's go a little bit further. The marriage of the Lamb is coming. And look at what we see here. Let's start in Revelation 19 verse 10 first. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. All right. And I saw heaven opened and the white horse came. And listen to this. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. And make war. And his eyes were as a fiery flame and his head as it were with crowns. Um, and he's called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and white. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. So it's war and it's sword. So what do you think the clue is here? This is the second sword. This is the definition of what was being spoken about in Zechariah chapter 14. And it says, that with it, he should smite the nations. Okay? When does he smite the nations? Just like we read in Zechariah 14. This is during the 14th year. This is the evidence that the bulls are during that 14th year as well. Shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The wrath of the Father. Now listen to this. The, the fowls of heaven, they're all called to gather to the great feast of God, right? For all those that are going to be killed. Listen to starting in 19, verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Listen to this. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and that worshipped his image. These both were cast into, that's what I was looking for, the lake of fire burning with brimstone. When does this war happen, brothers and sisters? It does not happen after the millennial reign when Satan is released for that thousand years again. This is all telling us he's making war with them. We're told it's Christ. We're told that the, the false prophet and the beast are going to be now cast into the lake of fire and the remnant were slain with the sword. So when we look at this and we see that the bulls, one of them is being poured out on the seat of the beast. And then at the verse 13 in Revelation 16, it says all three of them, the spirits, their, their spirits, which are like frogs, are sent out. It would be impossible for the beast and the false prophet spirits to be sent out if they're already in the lake of fire. This is telling us, you see, when there's absolutely no more water to drink, when the entire sea and everything in it dies, when all the, the fresh waters are blood, they've got nothing left to drink but blood. They can't survive very much longer. You see, this group... In, in the bowl judgments, in the vile judgments, they were never going to repent. They were all going to be destroyed. You see? 
So now we can clearly see that the bulls are truly a portion of time of the seventh trumpet, that final year within that final year time frame when they're all destroyed. Watch this. Let's keep going. Okay. So now we see that the two of them are in the lake of fire and the rest of them are killed with the sword. So now we've confirmed that second sword from Zechariah 14 deals with the time after the bulls, the vials have been poured out in the later portion in, in, the, in the 14th year and the rest are slain, okay? That came against those nations that they brought against that we read in the bull judgment right towards the end. And then listen what happens. Trumpets are now come to an end. Listen what happens. Satan is now bound. Satan is bound. Remember, Satan couldn't have been bound at the beginning of the 13th year. He had to be bound sometime at the end of that battle, within that time frame of that battle. Because the spirit of frogs came out from him, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. So he couldn't have been bound immediately. Okay, so now we see the two of them are the first ones cast into the lake of fire. But Satan is bound for a thousand years. And when Satan is bound for a thousand years, it's the millennial reign of Christ. And there's a group who put their lives on the line, who, who were beheaded, right? Who were beheaded for the word of Christ, for, for their faith and for the word. All right. They're the ones that will be resurrected from the dead. They're part of the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, and they reign with him for a thousand years. Okay, they we're talking, remember I said I was going to bring it back to 1 Corinthians 15 by the end? Well, watch this. So there's this thousand year reign that takes place. The only two that have been in the pit since the end of the 14th year time frame are the Antichrist and the false prophet. Now, the thousand years are over. Satan goes out. Satan is loosed and shall go out to deceive the nations. Is it the spirit of Satan? Right? The frogs from Satan, the false prophet, and Antichrist? No. This is now Satan being released. It's Satan going out into, the, into all the nations that were around for the millennial reign. And he's deceiving them. And it says, in the number of whom was there as the sand of the sea. How is that possible? After all that devastation and everything in the 14 years, how is it possible that there's so many people again at the end of the millennial reign? Because I told you, it's 8 billion, 8 billion, 8 billion. That's what I believe the number will be. We're really, at the time of the escape here, the time of tribulation, it will have been about 8 billion people alive. And I believe it was to the flood. It's believed it was 7 to 11 billion at the time of the flood. I believe it was 8. And then it's 8 that will be alive now. And then at the time of the millennial reign when it's over, because they will have many wives, right? Most men will be killed, remember? They will have multiple wives. Women will compass men. They will have multiple wives. That's, that's what they were told they'd be given. Remember, it'll be the end will be like the beginning. So they will have multiple wives, multiple homes, and so forth, and kids coming out from everywhere. It will probably be, in my opinion, 8 billion people again. And in the end, this is why you have so many that will turn with Satan again and listen to what happens. It's not a sword this time. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. Remember what happened is the Lord renewed the earth. He, he repaired it. Right? The waters were healed. The, 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 the temple was rebuilt, was repaired. And that's how everything took place during the millennial reign. They had to then go up. The kings of the earth had to then come up every year at the Feast of Tabernacles to worship them. If they didn't, then the reigns would be withheld from them. 
So if we're being told they didn't and the reins were being withheld, we know that some won't. And after a thousand years of this, when people are living hundreds of years again, you see, some will, won't want it. And when Satan goes out and whispers in their ear, this final group, it will be over because listen what happens. They're going to compass the camp of the saints and the beloved city. They're going to surround Jerusalem and everybody that's protected in that place at that time. And look at what happens. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all. You see, and devoured them. No sword. The two swords of the Lord were already used. This is now the Father God at the end of millennium. Whew. Finished. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they'll be tormented forever. Now listen to this. I said I was taking us back to 1 Corinthians 15 again. Okay, great white throne judgment. Um, he will no longer hide his face from those <coughs> from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open in another book. And they were judged according to their works. Why? Because it's the millennial reign portion, brothers and sisters. And it says, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Now get this, here it comes. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Remember what it said? <clears throat> These guys that lived and reigned <clears throat> with Christ for a thousand years, they were the only ones to take part in the first resurrection. Everybody else had to wait till the third 3000 years, right? Or the third or the, or the thousand year reign was over. This is why you have the guys over here in Hosea chapter 6 Right? Remember, this is to the Gentiles. This is like the end of the six seal time frame. Let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, that's after the 2,000 years, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. After two days, that's going to be for the millennial reign. And on the third day, those that are all raised up after the millennial reign. And what did it say? When is the millennial reign? <clears throat> Look at what it says. Death and hell are now cast into the lake of fire, and it's the second death. So when is death killed? When is death been completely conquered? After the millennial reign. Of course, after the millennial reign. Because during the millennial reign, people are still dying like we shared before, right? A hundred years old, you'd be dying as if you were a kid. But there's still death. And at the end of the millennial reign, when Satan's released, there's woof, right? Satan, uh, God comes down and, and burns them all and kills them all. So there's still death. So now this brings us back to 1 Corinthians 15 as I wrap this up. It brings us back to 1 Corinthians 15, which is so power-packed with revelation for us. So power-packed. It brings us back to this. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Right here. Brings us back to this. But every man... Uh, let's start in verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward 
they that are Christ's at his coming. Do you guys remember this word, at his coming? This is the one. We talked about it recently. This is the one from Luke chapter 24. When he comes at the end of the sixth seal. What is the end of the sixth seal? When he, uh, the sixth trumpet, sorry. When he comes at the end of the sixth trumpet. When he comes at the end of 13 years, to the beginning of 14 years. What is it? It's the end of two of 2,000 years. Who's this group afterward that are Christ that is coming? These are those that were beheaded for Christ. That are going to be resurrected to live with them during the millennial reign. It says, then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. We shared, we talked about this in the previous video. It was so awesome. Even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Which is what he does when he then reigns for the millennial reign. For he must reign. See, this is the millennial reign. Till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I just literally showed you the last enemy being destroyed at the end of the millennial reign for which he must reign for. The literal last enemy to be killed or to be destroyed is death death for he hath put all things under his feet but when he saith all things are put under him it is manifest that he is expected which did put all things under him and when all things shall be subdued unto him then shall the son also himself be subject Unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So now when we go back to the book of Revelation, and we see that death at the end of the millennial reign, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. There is no more death. It has now been destroyed. Look at what comes next. The Lord God with the new heaven and the new earth, the one, the bride, new Jerusalem, adorned for her husband, coming down from God out of heaven. The Lord God comes down and Jesus says, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him the thirst and water. And him he shall inherit all things. See, they're going to rule and they're going to reign now with them for eternity. It's over. It's over. How beautiful is that? That was a... I went into many more things than I had planned. But man, oh man. If you don't think this is understood, you need to rewatch this again. You need to go watch the entirety of that playlist. You need to spend some time. If the playlist is too long, get the book. Buy it on Amazon if you need to. It's like nine bucks US, eight ninety five. You can get a dollar for the ebook, and or you can download the PDF for free, for free. And get the book to leave for people. Because that's the key. That's why we did it. So that it could be left for people. So that we can hand them out. So that they could be in all places around the world. That when this time begins to come to pass. They will know. They will remember they were shared these things. The answer is 50. For 50 days. Escape of the bride. 50 days. Dash, dash. 14 years, seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets, the first seven, the final testing, the final trial of the church. The second seven is Jacob, is Judah, is Jacob's trouble. And then the final dash for the 50th, the Jubilee year. See, once the tribulation is over and all those tribes, remember when that final 14th year and the bulls are over, 
they will return from that wilderness where they were protected and nourished. They will return when it's all over and they will receive their inheritance and they will be with the Lord and the millennial reign will begin. I went past that today to the end of the millennial reign as well. So brothers and sisters, we've got it all in this one. We've got the seals overall revealed in a, in a bigger picture. The trumpets in an overall bigger picture. The millennial reign in a bigger picture. We have understood, brothers and sisters. We are at the door. You understand where I'm telling you as I'm talking to you right now and we're freaking out? We're right here. In fact, we're four minutes away where I live from being right here. And I'm telling you, I believe right in here, we're about to see the time of the stone's throw, the stone's cast. Brothers and sisters, I pray this has blessed you. I pray you come and visit us on the website, in the forum. There's, I don't know, close to 800 people in there now. Come and visit, share, uplift. We pray for each other. We're sharing news, all sorts of things going on around the world. We have a Facebook by our other brother, Jimmy. We got Trisha, who's taking care of our Twitter. You can support the ministry with the little time that's left. We'll use it for books. We'll use it for flyers being sent out. Brothers and sisters, this is it. This is really, really it. Could you imagine? Remember it had to be after 2,000 years from his death and resurrection? It really is true. <laughs> it's so exciting. I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. We'll talk to you soon, and I'm so looking forward to meeting you. I love you. Bye for now.